So next one is uh, Oran uh, SMO architecture and open source implementation uh, by N.K. Shankar Narayan, a research scientist at Rutgers Green Lab. Um, I also had the pleasure of working with Shankar for about, uh, I know him for maybe 10, 12, maybe 15 years, but I work about five years uh, with him as a colleague in Identity Labs. Uh, he has a PhD from Columbia University, um, my alum, and uh, IIT Technology, uh, Bombay uh, Bachelor's. Uh, uh, but he also had some leadership positions at uh, prior to uh, Mill Lab or at and Lab and STL Access. Um, he has a lot of contribution, cloud-based 5G um, service for internet network solution in at and and also a lot of standards activity. So with that, uh, let me open up uh, your slide. Uh, let's see. So we are going to reduce our break to 10 minutes, folks. So we're running a little late. Uh, let's see which one. Was that uh, Sankar, right? Uh, oh, yeah, this one. So let me. Okay, there are some folks in the West Coast. Um, they are they have a time constraint, and also, which one is that? Uh, Shankar, this, yeah. Okay, let me just make it control L. And that is a colleague of us who is in UK. So this is the down right for the next. Yeah. Okay, good. All yours, uh, 20 minutes. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, <clears throat> Ashutosh, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to IEEE. So uh, I'm going to be talking, many of the talks refer to the ORAN SMO and, and a lot of activity. Uh, but only now there is a slow increase in activity in the SMO space. So I'm going to talk to you about the ORAN SMO. And this talk is actually in two parts reflecting my background. I'll talk to you about the ORAN SMO architecture and also about open source implementation efforts in the SMO. Um, let me give you a little bit of background about myself because it'll help you understand where I'm, where I'm coming from. So I spent uh, close to 30 years at at and When I joined, it was at and Bell Labs Research and then at and Labs, a lot of forward-looking work in, in wireless systems. And then a lot of experience with developing and deploying sol solutions like RAN automation solutions in, in at and network. And then spent some time with, with a startup understanding uh, the RAN, uh, the WIC and ORAN ecosystem. Uh, then now I'm uh, then went independent as a consultant and, and then going back to my roots of research uh, to Rutgers University WinLab. By the way, Rutgers WinLab, part of Cosmos has been ORAN Pluckfest for several years. It's also an ORAN OTIC site. And so the other part reflecting this talk is, is I've always been involved in standards. So I was on the board of directors of the WiMAX Forum and now I'm serving on the ONAP Technical Steering Committee and the Linux Foundation Networking and the LFN Technical Advisory Committee. So I was quite involved with uh, open source in the area of RAN automation. And um, so especially the second part of this talk is partly based on some work I've been doing to, to bring more synergy and collaboration between open source efforts and, and better ideas from a lot of collaborators here. So the talk outline is actually in two parts. I'll, there was a lot of talk about SMO and I'll drill down a little bit into that to give you, based on my experience, some, some things that are that are happening, which other speakers have not touched upon. And then I'll pivot to uh, the open source efforts. So this picture would be familiar to most of you. I've redrawn it a little bit, just to make the point that on the horizontal red line you're seeing is, is the end-to-end -end user plane and and control plane going from, let's say, UE is attached to an RU, goes to the DUCU core to the internet. And that's most of it is, is based on 3GPP. So, for example, um, some of the speakers, when they talked about having uh, uh, a disaggregated RAN installation, mostly they were talking about you have a UE connect to the core through a CUDU, and, and that's what matters. You know, you need a connection to the internet where ORAN came in is largely to disaggregate the CUDU and RU and the, and the interfaces, and then put in this whole management and control plane vertically coming down. So if you want the full vision of ORAN, you need both this user plane and this management plane. 
And then when you come to the, when you talk about managing this RAND domain, you're really talking about this element called the SMO, service management and orchestration. And um, so he has redrawn the picture showing the SMO as a big block. And um, it has all these interfaces. Um, and here's another view of that with uh, highlighting that the SMO plays a very critical role. You cannot deploy an ORAN network with its full vision without an SMO. And at, le at least two uh, speakers alluded to the fact that the SMO has external interfaces to northbound interfaces and all that work needs to be done. It's not specified. And, um, and so if you look at the if you look at the specifications coming from ORAN, you'll you'll see that it's responsible for RAN domain management. It includes a non-real-time RIC. That's where your non-real-time RIC uh, optimization and control is happening. And then many other aspects are implied. I mean, they're specified, uh, the FCAP support, the orchestration and management of the cloud. And, and written in red here is, it's sort of assumed there will be interfaces to OSS and BSS systems. And somehow this will also interface to system managing the transport and core. And we heard about intent and I'll come to that as well. So, so how is this actually standardized? Uh, if you look at ORAN working groups, and I've been involved a lot in this work, which I'll get into, is uh, as far as the SMO is concerned, there's working group one, which covers the overall architecture. And there are working groups that have specifications that cover the southbound interfaces. And so working group two covers the A1 interface, and it also covers the non-real-time RIC and the RFs. And that's the closest you get to other details about what's happening inside the SMO. And working group 10, four, and six, respectively, are covering the O1 interface, open front hall inter interface in, in hybrid mode to the RU, and the O2 to the cloud. Um, the red text have added to the standard pictures what I'm just calling other SMO functions. And so if you look at if you look at the box on the right and, and the red text on the bottom right, if you notice there is no the SMO is a very critical aspect of the ORAN architecture, but there's no working group covering the SMO architecture. So the internal SMO architecture is not specified as of the published specs in uh, even uh, in June. Um, but a lot of the functionality is implied based on what's happening in the interfaces. So it's not as if no work is happening. So uh, I think a couple of the speakers, I think uh, Chilene's talk in the, uh, in the morning talked about the decoupled SMO and I think Scott also referred to it. Uh, this is something I'm intimately familiar with because as you see, there is work needs to be done to specify the internal architecture of the SMO. And this is some work that I, I initiated, the proposed the work item and I served as the first rapporteur for the uh, ORAN working group one decoupled SMO technical report. And um, what that does is it's, it's a technical report. So it's the specifications have not come out. We'll probably see something at the end of the year. Uh, but it gets into the details of the SMO, which is very important to achieve all of these things we are talking about, and all the things about AIML and intent. All of this, the standardization would not happen, would not happen without these specifications. I'm happy to say this work is progressing, and mind you, it's an ongoing study. Um, and but the consensus still now, like uh, as people have alluded to, that the SMO architecture is service based, and the functionality is being defined as. SMO functions which produce SMO services, and all this is already included in the in the version nine uh, architecture spec. And uh, various other aspects have been have been also identified. And let me get into that here. So this is this picture is a the current draft view of the internals of the SMO architecture from the decoupled SMO architecture draft. And uh, mind you, it's active, ongoing work. So. Details will be added uh, as changes are expected. For example, um, there was a lot of discussion about intent, uh, intent-based management interfaces, uh, contributions are coming in, uh, things to do with, uh, so let me point out some things which, uh, which are sort of new based on this work. Uh, the, the gray boxes are, are is the, reflects the consensus of functionality inside the SMO. So you have, for example, on the left side, you have your cloud-based orchestration, you have your RAN network function, FMC and PM, those are your OAM functions. And that largely will reflect the interfaces, the O2 and the O1. Uh, but some other things are new. There is a topology exposure and, and inventory management. 
service and function, which was not there before. And it is it is critical for, to when you manage a network, you need you need inventory and topology. The data management exposure, service management exposure used to be inside the non-real-time RIC, and now more and more there's a realization that these are very important functionalities exposing data and services. So there's a vision that the network will be controlled and, and managed and optimized using applications like our apps. How will an R app be onboarded? How will it figure out what services are available? How will it get its data? All this will come through these specifications. Um, the external interfaces are going to be very important. Uh, and in any deployment, they are there. Uh, but the specifications are getting around to it. Um, so now, now I'm going to pivot the rest, the other part of my talk, reflecting my background and involvement in, in ONAP and ORAN and LFM, is um, what, what's happening with open source? You, you heard a lot about open source, um, and, and there are there are the instantiations of the of an end-to-end -end user plane from, like, say, OAI and SRS RAN, and we heard about Open RAN Gym. A, a lot of the activity has been, and it should be, if you start with the the RU, the CU, and the DU, and when it comes to the SMO, things are only now they're not at that level in terms of open source implementations. So what is the role of SMO related open source in, especially in ORAN, ORAN software community, OSC and ONAP? Um, just sharing the view of many of the people, uh, a consensus of many of the leads is the goal of an open source uh, implementations of SMO is not to produce a fully commercial solution. It is to produce solution building blocks and reference implementations that people can build on and the best practices. Now, this is very important. Most people say it's important, but let me just lay out why open source projects are important because one, of course, you have openly accessible implement implementations of things before the standards are specified. You, there's free standards work and uh, um, uh, the gentleman from uh, Hughes, he made this observation that telco nowadays is, is a very software intensive process. It's CICD solutions, um, best software practices, and that innovations get soft, gets fostered in the open source world. So at least reflecting, that's why many of these open source projects are in the auspices of the Linux Foundation. It's a very, it's a very compute centric mindset. And reflecting my involvement in universities now is I'm seeing hands-on, this is what students work with. And, and with Northeastern and Virginia Tech, you will agree. If, if you don't have open source solutions, on which students, graduate students learn and train, where is the talent pool going to come from? The pipeline that the industry needs. And so if you don't have these open systems, people are not going to you know, improve the skills. Now, all this is, people realize this, the ORAN Alliance has a, a focus group called the Open Source Focus Group that provides guidance and coordination. And then this, that's going through a renewal in ORAN 2.0. Um, there's, there's a lot of involvement with obviously the ORAN software community and now with OAI and other open source standards. And I'll just talk my perspective on, on some work we have done with uh, ONAP and ORAN SC. Now, just one word about these end-to-end -end installations, again, coming back to this picture. So if you have, say, OAI and SRS RAN or uh, imp and implementations of the user plane, and here's one example of, for, uh, in the ORAN Alliance, the open source focus group has a super wireless RAN blueprint, which says you need all these piece parts to have an instance so that people can use this to develop further and, and these are various possibilities. The way to read this is you, you can use simulators, you can use, you can get DU and CU from, from OSC, or you can get from uh, OAI, and you can, you can build up the entire uh, session. The point I'm making here is if you also want this managed the way ORAN is specifying, then if you have the SMO, uh, you need this own, a working own interface on the CU DU and a working open front hall interface on the RU that's when you'll have the full vision. Thanks. Um, so SMO related projects, the ORAN software community started with RAN and is getting into the SMO space. I'm very familiar with the ONAP community, which is a network automation based uh, and it naturally fits into the SMO space. And their work started pre-ORAN. Um, and now, and I have spent a lot of time with others on OSC and ONAP harmonization, and that's a continuous process. And open source projects in the space tend to be modular. 
because um, they, there are piece parts, that's what makes sense. And you can't bring everything together if you don't have the specifications of how they're supposed to come together. So I'm happy to say now there's a lot of synergy and alignment for we have worked at the TOC and TSC level and OSC and ONAP. There is a realization that this should not be duplication. We should have improved synergy and collaboration and build on existing work. And I'll refer you to uh, some presentations and proposals we have presented in multiple forums, um, just building upon all this. So coming back to this draft view of the SM architecture, um, this is where a lot of open source activity is happening. And the way to read this is all this blue text are own app projects and all these red text are or NSC projects. And I'm, I'm just focusing on OSC and own app because of the, the context of the slide. And uh, as you can see, it's working on different parts of what I showed before in the SMO. Some of it fits in, some of it doesn't fit one to one. Some of it overlaps outside. So there are some gaps. Like if you see intent on the top left, there is, there is a project in ONAP on intent-based management. Um, there is, um, um, if you, some, of the, some of the standard things that you would expect, the non-real-time RIC is a project, OAM is a project. The OAM project overlaps and, and uh, harmonizes with the West project and the STNC project from ONAP. Uh, just pointing out something where there, something that may not fit into the specs is policy. A policy-based coordination of applications is, is a, there's an ONAP project has been since the beginning. Uh, there's no neat place where it fits into the ORAM specifications. And, and only now as implementations will realize the value of those things. Um, uh, I'll just show you a few projects, just flash them quickly, just to make a few points. Uh, there is a 5G SON use case that I've, I've led for several years in ONAP, and it takes a control loop approach of RAN automation. So we used a simulated RAN on the right, and you have a microservice handling data. So the text in yellow just making this point that the RAN control loop, it started out as pre-ORAN, and now it's getting aligned with the RAP and R1 vision. The interfaces to the RAN O1 and A1 are aligned with ORAN. And this, there's a lot of work on configuration. And so the configuration database, you have to keep a database configuration if you're, if you're managing and automating. Um, so that configuration database was using the same Yang model that the CUDUs use. So this is, this is the kind of work. The OAM project in ORNSC is where you have your REST collectors to get data, you have your net, net conf controllers to control the network. And that sort of ties into uh, a, a use case in OSC of RAN PM measurements. I'm just giving you examples of things happening in open source, which, which is SMO functionality. PM data comes in, gets into a PM database based to the RF. And if the databases are not specified, the project leads, they, they make reasonable choices. Uh, this is the non-real-time RIC project. I'll just refer you to, to the OSC website. There's a lot of detail there about the A1 um, and, and our app management. Um, here's, here's a nice uh, data point. There is a project called the AIML framework in OSC. And this is where they have to worry about AIML ML data on which you can apply, uh, develop, uh, train ML models and apply them. And that happens in space, maybe inside an SMO, maybe outside the SMO, but it has to interact with the R apps. That's where the model gets executed. So you get into this data management and exposure as to how the R apps know how to get the data. So only when you go through an implementation, you realize how will usually an open source proof of concept demo will say, I have my data, I have my application. I want to just demonstrate this. And then you figure out, the point I'm making is you have to figure out how this fits into the architecture and specifications. Otherwise your open source work has a danger of diverging from the specs and, and losing relevance. So anyway, in, uh, in summary, uh, I talked about the SMO. It's a critical part of the architecture. Everybody agrees, but you may not realize that there is ongoing work on the details of the SMO architecture. And there's a lot of ongoing open source implementations and all this has to come together. And so I have spent some time working with people, making sure there is some alignment and synergy and, and there's an increased momentum and, and uh, contributions to open source is always encouraged. Thank you.